Welcome back to another episode with The Unspecialist. I guess I'm going to call this one The Case Files because boy, do I have an interesting case study for you guys today. So let's dive right into it. Anyone who's been online for any length of time, specifically on social media, would have likely heard about the gender war. And naturally, in this gender war, there's a men's side, a woman's side, and all the other new age gender sides in between. Much of the media and consequently public scrutiny has been focused on the men's side of the divide, with men's groups being characterized as hate groups or sometimes even cults. And these labels are only further crystallized when real world tragedies and psychos are linked back either directly or indirectly to these online groups. Now there's certainly an argument to be made as to whether or not this is simply manufactured media hysteria to stymie the progress of these men's groups in favor of more progressive or feminist ideologies. However, that's not the focus of this video today. This video is focused on the plain fact that many of these destructive behaviors are exhibited, excused, and even encouraged in female groups. And that's why this case study focuses on a quite flagrant exchange between two female content creators, Jessica X and Shira 71 it all starts with Jessica X, a content creator based in London, England, who primarily focuses on mating and dating, intersexual dynamics, and various relationship topics that are relevant to persons living within a Western culture. And because her content primarily highlights the shortcomings of the modern Western woman and is riddled with pro-male positions and talking points, she's managed to grow a pretty good following, but she's also managed to stir the vitriol of many women online, most notably the level up queen herself, Sheer71. And here begins round one. Sheer71 decided to record a live stream entitled Reacting to a Pick Misha video. Pick Misha simply being a blackified version of the term pick me, which is pejoratively used against women who are believed to put down other women in order to uplift themselves for male attention and validation. And in that live stream, Sheer7 decided to call Jessica X's female followers pick me's and her male followers Dusty, which is another pejorative term used on men who the level up community and other female groups see as bums, no good, or useless. And in true internet catfight fashion, Sheer71 and her followers largely ignored the talking points and positions of Jessica X and rather decided to launch a torrent of abuse during the live stream at Jessica X describing her as a man, a tranny, a catfish, a woman who's living in Peckham, the council estates, a US person pretending to be from the UK, a scammer, a fraud, and other things which I just rather not mention. Now, naturally, after having the spotlight placed on her by a much larger content creator who has an audience that is antagonistic to her message, Jessica X's channel soon faced a wave of crusty cult members who brought the aforementioned abuse to her comment section and to some of her open panel live streams. Many of the Britain comments were born of speculation as Jessica X is a content creator who prefers to remain anonymous using only a few most likely filtered photos to represent herself in her avatar. And in response to the abuse, Jessica X decided to ride the wave and continue reacting to the content put out by some of the larger level up creators. This only added fuel to the fire and led to round two where the exchange drew the attention of another YouTuber, Crystalline Carson, who decided to team up with Shiro7 and perform a Dragon Ball Z fusion with the two of them coming together to have a Shiro7 swirl stream to make major announcements and address detractors or opponents, namely Jessica X. Once again, neither Shiro or Karazin could effectively refute Jessica's points, so they resorted to attacking her credibility by claiming that Jessica wouldn't have a leg to stand on without responding to their content to build herself up, or that they don't respect someone who continuously hides behind the camera, or doesn't show their face, which I find quite interesting given the fact that at least one of them had recently collaborated with another popular YouTuber, Chrissy who never shows their face. Hypocrisy much? But then again, this doesn't surprise me. As things always go with the sisterhood, you get a pass so long as you play for the home team. Which brings me to my first observed cult behavior, which is a persecution complex, the us versus them mentality. And in this case, Jessica X is the enemy with a message that directly opposes 
that of the group. And despite her relative insignificance, she is interpreted as persecuting the group. And Shira Seven, and in some cases as well, Karzin geniusly and effectively used this to validate their message and claim that, hey, look, you see, here's someone that's attacking our message. That means it must be true. It must have some sort of value because here we have a woman campaigning on behalf of men to attack what we're trying to tell you or sell you. Interestingly enough, Shira decides to take this measure a bit too far as that Shira 7 swirl stream eventually turned into an 8 hour obsession broadcast with Shira trying for several hours and trying unsuccessfully to get Jessica X to call into her show. One of the problematic features of a persecution complex is that the enemy created must be neutralized. And in an explosive round 3, Shira 7 takes the neutralization a bit too far. She leads her followers on a campaign to unmask, or in proper terms, dox Jessica X. She sent her followers to crawl the webs to dig up as much information as they possibly could about Jessica X, encouraging her London followers to try and sniff Jessica out if indeed she lived in London. And clearly this campaign was a failure. As in a grand but botched doxing attempt, Shira 71 made the ridiculous claim that Jessica X was in fact another female British YouTuber, Soraya Stewart. And as an addendum to this failed doxing attempt, Shira 7 made the absolutely asinine claim that Peter Komalafe from the Conversation of Money channel was in fact the viral YouTuber Kevin Samuels. Now, as is to be expected from the doxing or failed doxing, both Peter and Soraya faced a torrent of abuse from the crusty cult following. This abuse involved hundreds if not thousands of negative comments on both their YouTube pages and on Soraya's other social media platforms. I can only imagine their surprise after seeing something as ridiculous as this given the fact that they had absolutely no involvement in the build up or the exchange between Jessica X and Shira 71. This was a grand display of not just one, but two cult characteristics in groupthink and cognitive dissonance, as a significant portion of Shira 7's followers decided to avoid critical thinking and maintain some logically impossible beliefs in order to fulfill the persecution complex. Now, anyone with a rat's brain can tell that Peter and Kevin aren't the same person and that Jessica and Soraya are obviously two different people, but in case you do have a rat's brain and you need confirmation that this is indeed a fact, on a Jessica X stream, both Peter and Soraya showed up to completely debunk Shira's insane allegations. Early on in the stream, you can see Crystal and Karazin calling. You can also see Shira 7 herself calling, displaying some very childish behavior. And in my opinion, after this entire fiasco, she should have no followers at all. However, the fact that she barely took a dent and still has so many followers is a display of another cult characteristic, submission, the total, almost unquestioned trust in leadership. And I'm sure I'm not making a stretch to say that many of her followers see her as some sort of goddess or special individual gifted with knowledge to deliver them from the dusty and lead them to a promised land of sugar daddies and exfoliating baths and milk and manuka honey. But I digress, as this leads into some of my key observations and main takeaways from this entire ordeal. One of the first things you'll notice is that this isn't the first time we've seen this kind of deplorable behavior from Shira 71. Here we have a comment on the one of Soraya's videos by a Shira 7 subscriber saying, and I quote, I've been watching Shira 71 for a very long time. You were actually one of her victims who had it good. One of her last victims was stalked by her subscribers. One of her subs drove down from Ohio to California to knock on her victim's door with her kids at home. Several other of her subs had their addresses and sent men to their house to threaten them. You were actually a success story from Shira 71, so you're lucky, and I'm sure she'll do it to yet another victim again. You're not her first victim, glad to hear you're better though." End quote. Now obviously it was sickening to see the behavior displayed by Shira 71 and the crusty cult followers, but there were some rays of hope 
Here we have a comment from one of her subscribers on the Soraya video saying, and I quote, as one of Shira's followers, I'd like to apologize to the both of you for these attacks. Speaking of Peter and Soraya, I hope Shira did extend an apology already to you guys and I really still expect her to apologize publicly on her channel because she falsely accused two people. Even after some of her followers, like me, already pointed out that neither one of you is KS or Jessica X. And mostly, I would like to apologize for all the lunatic sheep who just followed her order and attacked, especially you, in a most ugly way. Even if it was Jessica X, still not cool, but especially since you are not the people claimed, it is even worse. End quote. Glad to see that this person pointed out some of the cult behavior as well. We also have Soraya's response to Jessica after the entire ordeal, and I quote, there's been not one apology. She's tried to brush it under the carpet whilst I'm still getting abuse. I've had to filter out my comments still to stop the abuse. Shira's not once said she's sorry when she causes me harm. Meanwhile, Jessica's made sure that I'm actually okay and that speaks volumes. I'm a young black woman being bullied across the net, which is not okay, now or ever. It's laughable to suggest that Jessica and I are related. We've never met and didn't know each other before Sunday. I'd never heard of Shira either. Jessica has never used my pictures. There's so much more I could say, but I'll leave it with justice will be done. Thank you, Jessica. Let this be the last time you or I have to speak on this. She won't be getting away with this. End quote. Perhaps the most interesting development is that after the entire ordeal, Crystal and Karazin decided to double down in her support of Shira 7 1. I wonder what that says about her as a content creator. Maybe she'll be the future subject of a case files breakdown. Shout out to Soul Provider Speaks. Regardless, let me know what you think about this saga in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content in the future. This is The Unspecialist saying, case closed.